what version of this of this camper van are we looking at? Uh, I'd say the current version is this iteration would be uh, 2.2, 2.5 maybe. Okay. I've changed it out quite a few times. Um, nice. So right now I just got this extension cord plugged into the wall because that's powering my refrigerator since I don't okay. want to set my solar the, panel uh, and everything. We have the leash on <laughs> uh, while, while, you're, while you're at home port. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's leased up. Yeah. yeah, I got the solar panel. I just don't have it hooked up right now because I have it actually folded up and tucked and in behind the passenger seat. Yeah, well, what do we got on top? Let's start at the top. What do we got on top? Okay, up here on the top is uh, my 50 cal ammo box. It just has my towing equipment in here. It's All my right. uh, towing receiver with the ball. Um, ratchet straps. The ratchet straps in here yeah. as well. A yeah. recovery tow hook for the bumpers to tow the van. Is that going to fall out? No, it's actually bolted in. There's a U-bolt oh, underneath. Yeah. So Got it's it. actually bolted in. Uh, here in the the cooler, the cooler is a 52 quart roto mullet cooler. It's the Ozark Trail from Walmart. Um, this right now is actually used for dry storage. I just have like water and soda like loaded in here, and locked up. It's currently only being secured to the basket by being wedged in by the front, and the spare tire wedges it in right here, and then it's locked down to the basket as well. So nice. it's actually you can like shake the whole van just by shaking the cooler because it's wedged and locked down. Right on. Um, the spare tire here, well, that's self-explanatory, just a spare tire in case I pop yeah. a tire on the road. Uh, on the uh, Here in the front is my MTM storage crate, and I just have cookware inside here. I have a um, butane stove, uh, pots, pans, plates, spatula, uh, just cookware to do cooking in that box right there, Yeah. actually. All right. Uh, inside the van right. itself. Um, Getting to the, the meat and taters <laughs> of the camper van. It's the... Uh, it's the no build conversion is what I did because the professional conversion costs seven to nine thousand dollars to have a company build it out with the actual cabinet tree, build Ooh. you a bed, put you the sink and all that. It's between seven to nine grand. I figured that's ridiculous. So I did the um, the no build conversion. Mm -hmm. Basically by purchasing everything you see in the van from Amazon, IKEA, home goods store, at home, places like that. Um, this bed right here is actually an RV bed. Um, this is a, a Fortnite mattress, a six inch mattress with the, um, I have memory foam uh, topper on it as well. Oh, okay. And uh, this mattress right here is designed for RVs. It's the cot size, the um, 30 inch wide. And it's designed for RVs, but I bought a, um, this is a Zinus Joseph, um, cut size bed frame it's about about 80 inches long and about 30 inches wide it's pretty small actually you can you know hold one person that's pretty much it um nice. the the reason why i went with this bed frame is due to its size and having the uh, bars that run all the way around it underneath for the frame oh it boxes it in nice and tight yeah anything i put underneath the van if i take like a super hard turn things don't come sliding out or flying out from underneath so this came in handy very nice and uh, as you can see, it's not actually bolted down. It's wedged in the van uh, up against the, the passenger seat up there. And then when the door is shut, it can't move because it can only bump the back door and bump the- It locks it down. Yeah, it's it's yeah. all, everything you're gonna see inside this van- Nothing's nothing, permanent. Nothing is bolted down. Nice. It's all magnetic, it's all zip tie, and it's all wedged into place. That's all it is. Except for your, uh, your receiver hitch. Oh, well, yeah. That's receiver, not factory. The class three receiver here, um, draw tight, I believe is the brand on this one. This was installed like a couple years back actually. And we're the ones that did that ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that receiver was installed aftermarket along with the, um, the power cable for the trailer here on the bottom. And uh, that's perfect for towing uh, or hooking up a basket or something if I want to get a gas generator. But uh, speaking of generators, I do have a generator to show you that I don't need gasoline for. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, the bed's in here like this, and uh, I got my, my dresser right here. And if you go around to the, the side, you'd see I just use uh, bungee cords to uh, keep it secure. So that way the drawers don't come flying open while I'm driving. It just has bungee cords going oh, all okay. the way down. Yeah. And I keep my clothes and toiletries and stuff in here. Mm. And, you got uh, a lot more going on under the bed. Yeah, oh, there's a lot. Yeah, I have a lot stuff <laughs> as well. Uh, also, um, here in the back, again, my water tank. It's just a seven-gallon water jug is all that is. 
And the reason why I have it located right there is because A, I can use it to wash my hands just by grabbing the jug, flipping it, and then washing my hands and using the water like that. Mm -hmm. That's why the nozzle, the spigot's on there. But B, what I mainly use it for is actually a shower because I have the, um, the Ivation shower. It's a USB powered uh, shower, uh, lithium ion battery. Here in my uh, toilet seat bucket, which is an emergency toilet if I ever need it. Um, I have my shower system in here actually. Let me get my water hose out. Use this to refill my jug hmm. there, rest areas, and other locations. Okay, so the shower system itself is the, the portable shower system by Ivation. There's the pump and there's the, the battery operated power cable to plug this into the battery. So, what this does is when I'm parked at camp or wherever I'm at, I need to shower. I put the, uh, the uh, pump inside the um, container right here by opening this up and mm -hmm. dropping the pump in, yeah. leaving the power cable exposed because the power cable plugs into the battery right here, actually. Mm. And then this battery is what powers the pump. It's a lithium battery, so it plugs in like that, oh, so locks like 100, in. 100% standalone. It's completely Don't need to plug in and nothing else. You don't need any additional plug-ins or power. So that plugs into that. The, the pump submerged in the bucket. Then, that's the USB charger cable for the battery. Does it have Bluetooth? No Bluetooth on this, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so, the shower itself, I plug it in like this, hook it up right here, and then, when it's plugged in and running, switched on mm. with the button, I have to stand a little ways back. I use my doors for cover, Ah, there you go. Both doors. I back up towards a building or a wall to give myself a boxed-in area. I stand a little ways back because it throws water a good three feet out away from this. So you don't have to stand right up next to it to shower. You back away a good three or four feet away and it's still hitting you in the face. Nothing so, falls back down into the uh No, nothing. There. No water blows back in there or anything. Mm -hmm. It just grabs it and throws it out a good three or four feet. So I stand like three or four feet away from back there. Nothing in here is getting wet. Absolute worst, I have a little bit of water right here on the edge of my doors on mm. both sides. Right here on the edge of it, there's some water like droplets and splatter. How much time do you spend on a camper van shower? Uh, usually only about five minutes because that water tank only runs seven minutes. If ah. it's a full tank of seven gallons, it's one gallon a minute. So you, able to, you able to turn the water supply off or? Yeah. Um, you got an on off switch? The battery itself that powers the pump, uh, turning it on and on by clicking it on and off oh, okay. while you're so, showering. So when you're soaping up and washing the hair and all that? You, you can actually get three showers out of seven gallons if you shut it off while you're soaping up and then turn it back on and shower again. Because then you're only using a couple of gallons, like two gallons, two hmm. and a half gallons. Uh, it's a seven gallon water tank. So but if you just for the away, average size six, four foot male. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you just leave it running continuously, you're only going to get a five, six minute shower, maybe seven minute at absolute most. Mm. So that's how I shower up when I'm on the road. Um, this bungee cord you're looking at here, this is actually where I fold my towel. I throw my towel in here and oh. my towel kind of hangs. So as I'm parked, it's being air dried or if I'm driving, the vehicle's climate control is drying up the towel hanging from here. So I have nice. my towel hanging uh, yeah. horizontally long wise. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much the um, the back of the van going and everything. Right. Um, I keep my soaps and toiletries in my dresser drawer and stuff. And I keep mm -hmm. a extra um, dish soap right here to wash my hands as well as to uh, nice. wash dishes and stuff. It'd, so, it'd be yeah, kind of cool if this, if this shelf you could like flip a drawer that's just for like shower stuff and it could come out this way. I could probably you do know? that actually. Yeah, probably like maybe a little modification. Way. True, yeah. I could probably do that actually. Yeah. You pull out backwards. Yeah, like yeah, like, like one drawer that's specifically for like shower All supplies. All the shower supplies. Yeah. I could probably do that actually. Because yeah. I'm never finished with the, the van build conversion. I'm always thinking about things, changing stuff, adding stuff, removing it, stuff, and all that good, good yeah. goodness. Um, it's always upgrading. It's never finished. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so right here under the back of the bed, uh, as you can see, here's my toilet here, uh, emergency bags, and I have toilet paper in my dresser drawer right there. Mm -hmm. uh, for emergencies, if I ever need a toilet, fortunately, I haven't you never needed a populated toilet. area where you can't just <laughs> hit up a Walmart. Or True. So fortunately, I've never actually needed this for an emergency use. It's, just, it's there if I need it. Right. So that's good. Yeah, under the bed here on the back, all I have here on the back, 
is uh, just my uh, my desk. I use on my bed while I'm inside the van because I need a desk to use my laptop and you know just sit at and have somewhere to eat at. Oh, nice. So I have a, a foldable desk with the legs and everything. It comes out. It's adjustable. It's got like a drawer in here as well. But I just use this for to hold my laptop and food while I'm sitting in bed or laying in bed and watching the movie or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I use that laptop for that. Um, I got my uh, my Coleman camping chair right here. This is just your standard camping chair, somewhere to sit outside the van when I'm not inside. So when you would park outside, hang out with the other uh, van dwellers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got here stashed on this side is a Trekology uh, collapsible camp table. Oh. This right here, uh, it's fully collapsed right now and put away, but. It's a small little table, like, you know, it's aluminum and a metal topping. And it's just designed to have a camp table to put your food on or sit your drinks on or whatever. So when you're outside the van, you don't have to sit your drinks and food plate on the floor or ground or anything like that. Nice. So I, I have this in there as well. Um, here on the back, that's pretty much it because I leave a little bit of uh, space here on the back side. That way I have room to my wrapped up power shore cable. Mm -hmm. I have it wrapped up. I just have it sitting here at the back and that's where I store it in the back. Um, here on the other side, this is actually where there's a lot cooler stuff to show for sure. Yeah. Flip up the bed covering. Underneath the bed, there oh, to the right, yeah. on the right side, there's MTM storage boxes. I keep food and a lamp and some extra items in there as well. And that's used for um, just storage, as dry storage with uh, rubber gaskets. So it's Im impenetrable by insects and all that. And yeah. no moisture gets in there. Uh, that Alpi cool that you're looking at right there is an actual refrigerator. Oh, That's really? That's a uh, 16 quart refrigerator. It's a compressor refrigerator, a 12 volt compressor fridge. How do you access that? Um, here on the front, what I do is uh, I just have it under the bed, so I lift it up like this. Oh, okay. And I, so... I reach in and grab what I need. No, um, right. You can also see from the top if you like lift it up like that. Right. You don't keep anything big in there. So no, just going. cans of soda, uh, packs of like sandwich, uh, stuff. sandwich stuff and yeah. things like that. Nice. Water bottles, you know, mustard, um, mayonnaise, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Get out of the mayo and man mustard. Yeah. yeah. So now, what is this guy? Oh, the Jackery 500. That's a solar power <clears> generator. <throat> um, you can plug in a solar So you got panel. 120. Yeah, it's got USB, 12 volt, the 120 outlet, uh, it, everything you can use from inside of a, a home outlet, a home power receptacles, it has that as well. You can charge it from solar panels, which I do have. I have a, a solar panel, solar socket 60 folded up. It's behind the uh, passenger seat. We'd have to get it from this side over here. Mm -hmm. And it's stuck behind the seat, um, stashed in front of the bed. And I can unfold that and throw it on the roof and point it at the sun and plug it in to get the free electricity. That, nice. You can also charge this while you drive from your vehicle's alternator from the 12-volt oh, okay. system. You can plug that in as well. Or you can plug it into any wall outlet for short power like I'm doing right now. I just have the extension cord partially unwrapped and it's plugged in by the extension cord and that's what's keeping it powered so, up. Right so now. when the Jackery's dead, how long on a 12-volt recharging source does it take to charge? Oh, quite some time actually. That's a good 8-plus hours for 12-volt. Mm, okay. It's pretty long. Which, is, which would be a normal driving time for somebody traveling. If you're traveling, yeah, it'd be a full driving time. But yeah. it's perfect because I can get the solar panel out on this side and show you. If you're not driving, you still won't run out of power because... Let me see. Oh, rusty hammer. The Jackery Solar Socket 60. Oh, okay. This right here, it's got the um, the arm that swings out for storage. I mean, for uh, mounting to point it at the sun. Mm -hmm. Unbutton it right here. Well, in the back cabling right here, this unzips, and there's a power cable in there, a good nine, 10 feet power cable that plugs into the generator from the solar panel. You can see it right here. And then, up the panel itself oh um, nice. buttons like that whoa <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of solar panel oh yeah it has uh, plenty of power for that generator. and how long does that take to charge your jackery from dead six to eight hours actually it takes oh, okay so it, it's about the same roughly as, the same as the 12 volt from the vehicle running it so, so running the vehicle so if, if, if you're uh, if you're a night driver day sleeper this would be the idea to charge your 
Exactly. That's true. Yeah. Exactly that. As well as it has pass through. <clears throat> so even after the Jackery is fully charged, you can continue to leave this deployed and any devices plugged into the Jackery, they don't actually use the Jackery's battery. They run off the solar. Oh, and the, nice. The battery stays at 100% the whole time this is deployed. Right. And then once you put this back up, then it starts using the battery once you take this offline. Oh, nice. So it is, it is pretty sweet, actually. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, uh, other than that, on this side, there is really nothing important. It's just, uh, well, my extra blanket <clears throat> here. It's a fire escape. <laughs> Uh, just um, extra storage down here is all that. Oh, okay. Storage, you get some more uh... more storage boxes right here. Nice. And then I have my electric blanket as well um, for the really cool emergencies. Yeah. <laughs> when it's really Washing cold. trips. Exactly. This is perfect for that. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what I got going so far. Uh, it's pretty simplistic design. There's still plenty of storage left underneath the bed, right in this area, going to the back. Yeah. So I can hold a lot more stuff as well. Um, these right here are just neodymium magnets. I have them on each corner because I use these to stick them like on the side of the van or on the roof of the van to hold my solar panel in place. Oh, okay. As you can see, it's got the grommets right there. Yeah. So using the grommets and using the uh, neodymium magnets, you can hold it elevated on the, the roof, the side of the vehicle, anywhere you need the basis to point at the sun. Nice. So I use the magnets for that. I just keep them on each corner. That way I don't lose them, as well as if you don't want to keep them too close together because they're neodymium magnets and they might stick together. Yeah. And that they're a disaster to pull apart. So right, they, they break. They, they will break when they stick together. They're very together strong. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I keep them on each corner of the van, away from each <clears> other. Um, one more thing I wanted to show uh, before we finish up the tour here. If you want to point the camera in this way. Okay. There's Please don't my... show me a bucket with poop. <laughs> Oh. oh, oh! You got a, you got a, you got a floating shelf. A floating shelf. Nice. The clothes hanger rack for shirts underneath to hang shirts underneath. There's oh, good, okay. There's a good few feet from that to the floor, so the the shirts can hang. You could actually hang shirts with only like maybe an inch of clearance before the shirt touches the floor. Decent. So there's like an inch of clearance hanging yeah. like that. And if you look at the way it's mounted, it's neodymium magnets. Oh yeah. Neodymium magnets are what's holding it in place. Yeah. Yeah, each of those magnets are 80 pound magnets. So this thing can be broke down and put right back <laughs> into service as a uh, cargo van. Exactly. The way it's set up, <laughs> it's not a permanent conversion. Nice. You can fully break it down and fully rebuild it in about maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Like that's Decent. about it. Decent. So yeah, what you're looking at here. So what, what's going on with the cab? With, with oh. uh, this is the this is the whole this is the whole. Uh, Nothing special going on in here other than um, instead of you get your it, your go, you got your COVID mask. Yeah. <laughs> And then, well, what are these? Do you got some, uh, like, it looks like direct fit custom. Yeah, the heat shield uh, heat reflective. Shields. Let me show you the uh, outside. Okay, the, so the we got like a. Reflect. They're good to reflect heat as well as they give you privacy. Not, not sponsored. Yeah, it's not sponsored. Heatshieldstore.com. <laughs> But you you uh, you appreciate their product. You, yes. you definitely uh, approve of their product. These I've had these for a couple of years now, and they're great because they reflect the sun, so they keep a lot of the heat out of the van itself. Yeah. As well as, as protect you can the see, interior. It, it's a small well from probably a nice you know for thievery. Okay, so when you know. you're uh, when you're inner city camping. Inner city urban boondocking. Er, there we go. That's what I was looking because for. Because you don't want people to come up and like look into your windows to see what you're doing in there as well as you don't want thieves to walk by and see like oh what does he have in here you know like kind of take a look around. Cause, so Because the worst thing would be was like you, you're in the backside with the twig and berries and somebody just like pokes their head in it and now all of a sudden you're a sex offender. Yeah. Cause they look in to see what you're doing you're back there taking a shit. And, <laughs> that was a yeah. joke. So um Anyway, they're inside the van. Oh, looks like the meter guy. Yeah, there's a lot of dogs there. Uh, yeah. what's, what's going on? Oh. oh, gotcha. What's that? Uh, paper and what? Oh, spectrum cable. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, we're no, uh, we actually have. AT we're good. We're good. We yeah, we have ATT. We're very happy with it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, back to the tour, um, now like the smaller, the smaller vans, as you can see, the minivans have less space for camping and living area. Yeah. So what I do is instead of hanging the partition, like most minivan dwellers hang the, the yeah, they block the backside the block off. The back off. 
right you lose all this front area that you could like store stuff and you know have your climate control running and the cold air and heat coming back yeah and you yeah there's a lot of you know interior space if you partition it off right there right so i don't partition off when i get to camp wherever i'm at for the night to make my space much larger adding a third more of the space i just put the blinds in the windows keep you know having the doors shut lock myself inside you know with the motor running ac going heat going if i need it whatever i need or if it's you know cool enough no heat no ac whatever uh, yeah yeah it just depends on the where you're the at climate, and the climate at, yeah climate well, that's a nice going. sounding shut so, too nice and solid yeah this, this is the yeah. stuff i have currently it's always work in progress it's always being and what are the what are, what's the details on the uh on the actual van itself it's a we got a uh, a 2017 ram promaster city and Pro i bought Master it brand city. new uh, and uh, 2017, I bought it brand new with 20 miles on the odometer. I got it for seventeen thousand nine hundred dollars. Nice. And and what uh what kind of fuel economy? What engine? What trans? Ah, uh, it's it's pretty good. Uh, specs under the hood actually. It's got the Tiger Shark uh, 2.4 liter. Mm -hmm. It's the the inline four cylinder. Uh, that motor uh, has the 170 horsepower and the 174 pounds of torque. So it's a little potent for a four cylinder. It's not weak by any means. Uh -huh. but it really gives the van its advantages for towing, weight, interior, and everything it needs is the transmission. It's got the, uh, I think it's the ZF nine speed automatic transmission. So it's capable of towing 2000 pounds behind the vehicle. And for interior, believe it or not, it's over three quarter ton. It's 1883 pounds for interior payload. So that's pretty impressive for sure. And 2,000 pound towing with the total vehicle weight, including the vehicle itself, I think it's 6,000 pounds. Is the, wow. the GVWR, I believe is Yeah, gross vehicle is. weight, yeah. Yeah, it's 6,000 pounds total. Uh, the van itself uh, is 3,500 pounds completely empty and dry. With all my interior, roof rack, tow receiver, uh, everything in there with the full tank of fuel, it's just under 4,000 pounds actually. Mm. So it's about 39.95 or somewhere along there. So with it being right around 4,000 pounds, that gives me the 2,000 pounds of towing capability or just under 2,000 pounds of interior payload because it's 6,000 total pounds for the gross vehicle weight rating. Decent. But overall, it's a great machine. Um, I like it for its fuel economy. Here in no, the uh, no warranty issues or uh, recalls or anything that you've had to, um, you've got to complain about as far as it just running and operating. The only issue I had is a known issue that's on these vans was the radiator cooling fans that burn up on them. That's a known issue for these fans. Uh, on, the, on these vans, their fan that burns up. So I had the recall done for the fan after it burned up on it. And that was completely replaced free of charge as of recall and a warranty purchase or warranty work. Uh, that's a known issue for uh, FCA's vehicle lineup for the, the Jeep Renegade, the Promaster City, uh, what else? Just basically they have a whole, like a handful of vehicles that FC had a problem with their radiator fans that burned up on them. But uh, yeah, so I had that already resolved and taken care of, so that's stable. It's been running fine, you know, for the most part, you know, no issues other than replacing a battery that went bad on there a few years into ownership. I had a battery go bad, but that's to be expected. Um, Decent. That's also because I kind of wore down the battery a little bit because before I had the jack regenerator, when I wanted to run phone and lamps and fans, and I would just use the under the hood battery. And you know, they're not really designed to do that as they're the starting battery, but I kind of used it as a house battery as well. So after a few years of doing that, that battery burned out. So anyway, I got a brand new interstate battery under the hood and the jackery inside the vehicle. So now with the battery under the hood, it's never used for anything but running the vehicle itself. I don't ever use it to power laptop, phone, lamp, anything. I just use the jackery under the bed for that. Okay, so this has been uh, Joshua here, and this is my 2017 Ram Pro Master City uh, camper van, the no build build on this camper. And uh, yeah, so it's always work in progress. So what you've seen so far isn't the complete product. I'm always adding to it, removing to it, rearranging and organizing. So in the coming weeks, months, it'll probably look similar yet substantially different. Do you have so, a YouTube channel? I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's actually my name, Joshua Simpkins, but currently I don't have any content posted to it or uploaded right now. 
Mm. So maybe here in the near future, I may start uploading content, maybe. I'm not too sure yet. But as for YouTube, I do have a YouTube channel, just there's no content posted. But you will be uh, making content on, uh, during your travels? Chances are, uh, yeah, I believe so, actually. Mm -hmm. So chances are I will be recording some video footage and potentially uploading it to YouTube. All right, so we'll throw the link in the description and, and we'll see what comes up. That'll be fine by me. All right. Thanks for uh, showing us your van. No problem, anytime. <laughs> totally my brother, so just... <laughs>